Hello, I'm Neil and welcome to Seoul and Sports News. England were frustrated by the United States on match day two of the World Cup. After comprehensively beating Iran in the opening game, Harry Kane and company were held as the World Cup finals win and the USA still remains a distant dream. The three Lions, however, faced their debutant neighbours Wales in what was being called as the Battle of Britain. We take a look at the build-up to this tricky fixture at the Ahmed bin Ali Stadium in November. England are all geared up to face neighbours Wales in the final group fixture at the Ahmed bin Ali Stadium tomorrow evening. The three Lions started off their World Cup campaign with a thumping victory over Iran, but were held to a frustrating nil-nil draw against the United States on match day two. Eyebrows have been raised over the choices of substitutions made by England manager Gareth Southgate, as fans and pundits believe that he was too conservative in his approach. England forward Marcus Rashford, though, thinks otherwise and has defended his manager. Actually, since you know Gareth's been been managing, um, you know maybe before it was a little bit of an issue um, in terms of quality of training um, and people's uh, dedication to, to training. But you know since he's since he's been manager of England, it's it's been good. It's been intense. Um, it's been challenging. The disappointing result on Friday did not harm England's qualification scenario as a win would seal up top spot in their group. However, Wales with just one point will not go down without a fight as the Welsh group still believe that they have a glimmer of hope of progressing. I think this tournament has shown that every team is beatable. I really do. So of course England are beatable. Um, they've got a wonderful pool of, pool of players to choose from, I might add. So whatever team he puts on that pitch is going to be a tough challenge for us and of course they're going to be favourites to win the game so um, we've just got to focus on us and, uh, and, and like I said we, we want to, the group want a positive reaction, we want to go and show a red wall that we're not just here to, to give disappointing performances we want to go out now and give a good account of ourselves It is a Royal British rivalry on football's grandest stage a game of pride and history England go in as favourites and are expected to go through but a Welsh surprise is never out of sight before the hottest game of the World Cup, I was in the cold to see the morale of the English supporters as the three Lions faced France in the quarterfinals. It was a heartbreaking loss. However, the fans before the game were quite optimistic. Yes, Sid, it might be very cold and freezing here in England, but the three Lions are in hot form. England are in the quarterfinals of the World Cup and they are just three hurdles away from bringing glory back home. Well, we caught up with a few, few fans in Southampton city centre. We caught up to see what they're feeling against the big game against the defending world champions, France, on Saturday. Le Bleu might be having that crown and they might be proudly boasting that. The world champions are also just three hurdles away from defending their crown. But in front of them is a hungry three Lions team. Both teams haven't lost a game and both teams would like to finish on a high. Well, we can all expect the old rivalry which reunites on Saturday that we can have a humdinger of a game. It's France versus England, two European giants, and all we can expect is a big game on a weekend. Sadly enough, just one amongst the two European giants can actually make it to the last four. We as English fans, we do believe that the three Lions have everything to go to the last hurdle. Back to you, Sid, in the studio. As Southampton FC are struggling to be at the top flight for the next season, the morale of the supporters has been static throughout the season. But after positive results against the big boys Chelsea and Man City in the League Cup did make the Saints fan believe to turn things around in the middle of the season. I caught up with some Southampton fans the day after they beat Chelsea and about their views about the new interim manager Ruben Sellers. Saints did a double over the big boys from London. Southampton's win over Chelsea at the weekend sparked a new hope for the bottom place Southampton FC. I caught up with some Saints fan of how they felt about this weekend's results and the new interim coach. And can this result at Stamford Bridge be a new turning point in Saints' quest to stay in the top flight? Um, I think it's early days at the moment. Um, they had a good game the other day. Um, they weren't expected to get a win. I think the defence played a lot better. Um, I think they need to get a couple more strikers that are actually hitting the target and that. Um, you can't rely on Wolf to score every goal, like, do you know what I mean? So otherwise, I think, you know, give him a chance, like, see how he does. But I think it's important that um, it happens soon, because we're at the bottom of the table, right? Yeah. And, 
you know, people like Everton and that are uh, starting to pick up on their game and everything. So um, it's just a matter of time now, just to see, see how he does. I, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to keep him in or get another manager in. So let's see what happens, isn't it? I think they looked like they were really up for the game. That's the best I've seen them play. Like They looked like they wanted to win and they defended their goal really well. So hopefully, you know, that's a turning round point psychologically. You know, because there's a lot of mental yeah. stuff in the game as well as physical, isn't there? So hopefully, yeah, it changed everything. Um, I, I, I'm not really bothered. I think we should look, look, look at um, someone different, that's for sure. I I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of like Frank Lampard, if I'm honest, do you know what I mean? So, like, but let's see, innit? I don't know if he'll come to Southampton, though. Thank you, sir. Well, Ever since Ruby came in, it's been absolutely amazing. Obviously, we've just won against Chelsea. So. What else is there to say? Do you think Southampton, this big win can give them confidence that they can avoid relegation? Oh, 100%, 100%. We've got confidence now. If we can beat Chelsea, we could beat anybody. It was absolutely amazing. I was there at the stadium. You should have been there. Scenes were chaotic. Everybody was so gassed, so happy. And yeah, it's just given us the, like, the amazing amount of confidence we need. And uh, yeah, we're just, we're going to be shooting for the stars from now on. Great. I thought it was a guaranteed three points, so losing that game was a bit disappointing. We didn't play well and uh, serious issues are there at Chelsea right now. And uh, let's shift our focus to Southampton. Uh, what do you make of Southampton as a team? You know, they are under the new new manager, interim manager. Yeah. And uh, well, they have done the double against your Chelsea. Yeah. So do you think that this big result away from home at Stamford Bridge can give them a lot of confidence? I think Southampton, uh, the new coach, interim coach, I've heard good things about him. Uh, I think he's a really up-and-coming coach, uh, has a possibility of being a full-time manager, so he seems a good coach and they have a lot of young young players, so I think given a bit of time they might stay up, but it looks a hard ass to be honest. So what do you feel like they're still at 20th, still at the bottom, yeah. even after this great result at the bridge? Yeah. Do you think somehow still, because there's still time left, can yeah. they sneak out of that relegation zone? I think it's going to be very difficult to be honest because of the competition and you see the sides around them. You see West Ham, Everton, their sides have spent a lot of money. So I think it might be a really tough, but they have a chance. And last question to you. Uh, well, as you've spoken about, you've heard a lot of things about the new manager. But according to you, who do you want to see as a Southampton manager? If they, of course, stay in the Premier League, if the interim manager does you know, manage to you know, uh, hang them ha about in the Premier League. But who do you want to see? Who do you think is a perfect fit, fit for the Saints? To be honest, I thought Jesse Marsh was a fit because I think his style of football suits Southampton, but apparently that's not on the cards now. But if they have another chance, I think Marsh is a really good fit for the role. All right, thank we you. are at the home of the Solon Kestrels basketball team. With disappointing results last season, Solon Kestrels welcomed back their former coach, Ben Stanley, after almost 10 years. He parted ways with the Kestrels in 2012. I caught up with Ben to know about his future plans and most importantly, what changes does he see after coming back, not only with the basketball facilities at the university, but how the game has evolved overall. The home of the Solon Kestrels. Much is expected from the basketball team in the upcoming season. The man in the hot seat is Ben Stanley. I spoke to him about how he feels about his second stint with the team. Well, it's a massive change in the university. You know, I played here um, when we used the East Park Terrace Court for our home court where you could barely fit any fans in and people were crowding in. So this facility is obviously fantastic. Um, the program that has been put around the last three, four years around the club, around the university is excellent. Opportunities to play at NBL Division 2 the last few years this year, obviously with a remodel of the program now at NBL Division 1. Um, and we took essentially last year's Division 2 team to an 8th seed in the, in the men's league. So, you know, really fantastic in terms of the support from the HPA gym and, and the guys there. And just a really solid basis to run a program from. So ben, um, if you look at our level in Division 1 and with the men, you have Hemel, Derby, ourselves, uh, Worthing, who are selling out arenas. You know, Hemel and Worthing have massive arenas to sell out. Um, and then if you look at the next level up with what London Lions are doing, with what some of the other BBL teams are doing, um, Essex in the WBL had a record sellout crowd for their women's team this year. So I think there's absolutely growing interest in the sport. Um, we've just had an investment this week from uh, OG with the Raptors into Lions, so you have NBA interest in the sport as well now. 
So I think it's absolutely brown. Um, I think for us there are, there are stru structural changes at the university coming uh, in sport and that's going to change the way that we operate and our model. Um, I'm hopeful to still be here next year, um, but you never know, there may be other opportunities. So, you know, we, we see what happens as we go, but um, it's going to definitely be a change with the structural changes at the university, but hopefully we'll still have a strong program here. This is Neil for Solid Sports News. That's it for now. Thank you for watching my showreel for the batch 2022 to 2023.